In this video, wait, what the, oh, what the hell is that still doing now? I was supposed to close that before I started recording. Uh, hey, edit up, let's get rid of that. So uh, anyway, in this video, we're gonna be looking through ARK Invest's 2027 Tesla valuation model, the spreadsheet of all spreadsheets. And something that I think most on Wall Street would argue ARK Invest are, let's say, doing wrong. And why would that be? Well, unlike most, if not all others on Wall Street, in the finance industry, and even individual investors, ARK Invest has a probabilistic valuation model. Instead of trying to predict the future in a single scenario and go, this is exactly what's gonna happen. Instead, ARK Invest take an approach I personally would suggest makes more sense and attempts to probabilistically weight different outcomes. A much more complicated and nuanced version of my own Tesla valuation model, which also features probabilistically weighted scenarios. Now, this video is gonna get super nerdy, but it's very important. We're gonna see ARK's assumptions fiddle around with some of the numbers and I'll also stress test some of ARK's assumptions versus my own. I know for those of you who aren't numbers nerds, you may not be super excited, but if you own Tesla stock, please stick with me. This is going to be a super important and very informative video. By the way, in case anyone's wondering, sorry to burst your bubble here, but this is not a real photo. AI is a hell of a drug. Sorry to ruin your fantasy. If you'd like to follow along at home, there's a link in the description to the full valuation model. And just a couple of quick notes. I've been posting a shitload of exclusive content both on Twitter to my subscribers and on Patreon, including a recent biohacking experiment with continuous glucose monitoring, two week results, lots of data. A very spicy go f yourself to YouTube, which I posted exclusively to my Twitter subscribers, a follow up to a tweet that's doing the rounds this morning, and a video discussing political bribery, Joe Biden, the United Auto Workers Union, and UAW is now doing its best to actually destroy the companies whose employees it apparently, supposedly, allegedly speaks for. Check out the links in the pinned comment, subscribe to Twitter, join Patreon, or don't and miss out on lots of content. Choice is yours. So let's get into it. And I know a little bit difficult to read here. If you'd like to follow along, there's a link in the description to the full valuation model. I'll do my best here. So the key output from ARK's valuation model, ARK's 2022 suggested share price for Tesla. Again, this is not a prediction. This is an output, $1,402 per share. So we've got a bunch of key assumptions from ARK Invest here. If you wanna see them all, pause the video or even better, run through the spreadsheet yourselves. These are very important key fundamental assumptions to ARK's test evaluation model. Some of the key inputs, gross margins never exceed 40%. Personally, I think tail end of this decade, it's possible they will, but we'll play it conservative and some people, what are you talking about bro, 40%, that's impossible. See in 2030 motherfuckers. I've talked about this in detail in the past. Regarding Tesla insurance, ARK expecting around 50% of Tesla vehicles in 2027 Will be sold with Tesla insurance. To cross reference, in my base case, I have the insurance take rate in 2027 at 20%. My bull case, 25%. So ARK much more aggressive with their insurance estimates. And to be honest, I'm probably going to look like a moron because Tesla has the data. They will be able to price their insurance better than anyone else. So it's going to be a no brainer. If you buy a Tesla and you can get Tesla insurance, unless you like giving money away for no reason, Tesla insurance is going to make the most sense. There's also a ride hail insurance premium, e.g., if the Tesla vehicle is participating in ride hail, higher insurance premium, makes sense, more miles driven, higher probability of accident eventually, blah, blah, blah. Ark also assuming that Tesla will begin launching human driven ride hail, not just robo taxis, but also operating much like Uber or Lyft do today. One of the assumptions that really stands out to me, Ark expecting robo taxis will do 110,000 miles per year. And now to the juicy assumptions. We've got 2022 versus 2027. ARK Invest expecting Tesla to produce 10.847 million units in 2027 and sell all of them, give or take a few that'll still be in transit. Importantly, cumulative sales of almost 30 million by 2027, keeping in mind most of these in the future will be able to operate as rover taxis, buy software, etc. So this is Tesla's active install base. This is a very important number to focus on and keep in mind, if Tesla is producing 10, 11 million vehicles per year in 2027, and that continues to increase, this 30 million by 2027 will quickly scale beyond 100 million. Average selling price from ARK Invest in 2027, $33,583. My base case at $36,692, and my bull case, just over $40,000. We now have some assumptions on Tesla's ride hail business, the human driven ride hail. By 2027, about one third of all Tesla vehicles operating at least part time as a Tesla Uber, so to speak, with a human driver, not autonomous. In addition, a further 24% of vehicles operating as autonomous robo-taxis. So ARK expecting close to 60% of all Tesla vehicles in 2027 to be either operating as robo-taxis and or doing some human-driven ride hail. Another key and a very important assumption here, ARK expecting almost 24 million Teslas to be capable of full autonomy by 2027. We can see the breakdown here, the percent of the fleet in China, in the US, etc. 
Huck also expecting that in 2027, an average robo-taxi will do 110,000 miles in a year. For context, my own assumptions in my valuation model, 2027, in the base case, I'm at 36,500 miles. In the bull case, about 45,000 miles, so about half arc. I do, however, have robo-taxi miles scaling close to 100,000 per year early in the 2030s. And obviously, robo-taxi has a huge impact on Tesla valuation. Huge. So those are some of the key assumptions. Again, you want to nerd it out, feel free. Let's get to the juicy stuff. So let's run through these very important assumptions. What we're looking at here is an average selling price. So this is not the base price, the entry level. This is the average selling price. The total addressable market in that segment, in that price point, that's globally. And then ARC assuming Tesla captures about a one quarter share, 25%. So for example, Model S and X at an ASP of about $95,000. Globally, about 540,000 units of total addressable market. Tesla captures a quarter, that's 135,000. As I've said in the past, people get mad, but it's true. Tesla could delete the SNX, it wouldn't make a fucking difference. They're a spec, they're irrelevant in the scheme of things. They won't get rid of them. It's a great place to debut new technology, show off what Tesla's can do. But in the scheme of things, they're so irrelevant, they could disappear and it wouldn't make a difference. Next, the Model 3 and Model Y with average selling prices of 40,000 and 53,000 respectively. I like to look at these in combination. So we'll say a combined average selling price of about $46,500. Total addressable market here, 11 million. Tesla's share of that combined, 2.775 million. Now this is where there's a bit of a discrepancy. My own valuation model, I've got about 4 million units per year sold combined three and Y, end of the decade, similar to 2027. The key difference, however, I have an ASP on the Model Y and Model 3 combined of just over $40,000. In short, a little bit more economical than ARC, therefore it makes sense as to why there's a slightly larger addressable market. The Cybertruck, I think ARC are massively underestimating this, but is what it is, and we'll never know until it plays out. With an ASP of $55,000, total addressable market globally, 2.7 million. Now, for those who don't know, in a good year in the US, the number one, two, and three best-selling pickup trucks alone are about 2.7 million units. So ARC are expecting Cybertruck will only appeal to a small subset of pickup truck buyers globally and never expecting Tesla to peak at more than 675,000 units per year by 2027. I think it's gonna be a lot more than this, closer to 1 million. Let's see what happens. Next, the $25,000 Tesla. This is where things get a little bit ridiculous seeming on first glance, but if we think about this logically, it makes a lot of sense. ARC expects Tesla's $25,000 vehicle platform with multiple variations, a sedan, a hatchback, and a pure robot taxi, etc. Total addressable market at $25,000 ASP of 40 million units per year, a quarter, 10 million per year for Tesla. Guess what? This exact same number that's in my model. Exactly. 10 million, 25,000 bucks. What a coincidence. And here's where things get a little bit wild. ARK Invest have a next-gen vehicle, they're calling it a neighborhood EV, at an ASP of $15,000. For context, I have a next-gen vehicle with a base price of $18,000 and an ASP of about 20,000. It's a little bit more expensive. Obviously, it's gonna be a smaller market. ARK expect this vehicle alone, a total addressable market of 100 million units per year. Tesla share that 25 million units per year. And keep in mind, this is max units that Tesla could sell, not units they will sell, but max they could. And then a micro mobility EV, around a $7,000 ASP, total addressable markets, 10 billion. What's the world's population again? Less than 10 billion. So clearly ARC expecting that in theory at this price point, just about everyone on earth could have one of these. A household might have a handful of them. And spoiler alert, Tesla will not make these vehicles. Sorry to randomly pray, they can't make them safe, therefore they won't make them. Now, the caveat here, after 2027, far enough into the distant future when autonomy solves super safe, it's probably a different story. But while human beings are still driving and killing over a million of themselves every year, probably not safe, therefore Tesla probably won't do it. Combined, not including the micro mobility EB, which I think is a little bit out there. Cost-wise it could be done, but safety-wise Tesla won't touch it. This comes to Tesla's potential maximum sales of 38.58 million units per year. That's a lot. My own assumptions combined clock in at 31.45 million. So we're in a pretty similar ballpark, believe it or not. And again, this is an exercise I've done independently of ARC. It's in my valuation model. You can see it. It's in the table, the chart under long-term vehicle lineup, ASPs, annual sales, etc. So clearly ARC believe there is a lot of potential as Tesla drives costs down to massively expand the total addressable market. And I completely agree. Now, a lot of people will laugh at the idea of Tesla having a $25,000 vehicle than a $15,000 vehicle, but I've mapped this stuff out myself. And while my assumptions aren't quite as aggressive, like I said, my ASP on the next next gen vehicle is 20,000 bucks and the base price is 18,000. So ARC are a little bit more aggressive with their cost declines, but we're in the same ballpark. People are not understanding. The cost of EVs is gonna to continue to plummet throughout the decade. And this is really important to understand. 
Now, I'm no expert, I don't have an MBA or a PhD, and I don't manage money for other investors, but I personally believe if you can make very compelling, extremely affordable electric vehicles, you can have very, very large addressable markets and sell an absolute f ton of these things. As I've said in the past, I can see a point in the future where Tesla is selling close to 30 million vehicles per year. It won't be this decade, unless they surprise me with how quickly they can scale and drive costs down. But I genuinely believe at some point in the future, it's definitely feasible. I can invest also sharing some assumptions around ride hail. I just want to focus on one key number here. Cumulative market size at each segment, at 25 cents per mile, approximately an 11.2 trillion dollar opportunity. Not bad. And we're now looking at ARK Invest assumptions for autonomous adoption. Let's just look at the curve, makes things a lot clearer. We'll just focus on the left here, the example. What we're looking at is the percent of Tesla's fleet operating as a robo taxi. And along the bottom, we've got number of years. So in year zero, obviously, it starts at zero, duh, and then scales. ARK, in essence, have approximately a nine, 10 year window of time, where by the end of that decade, Approximately 100% of Tesla vehicles will be capable of and enable autonomous driving. Some operating for personal use, many as robo-taxis, but the point here, if they're operating as robo-taxis and or they have autonomy enabled, that means they're paying for a monthly subscription, most likely to autonomy. And that's where the size of Tesla's fleet matters a lot. Remember, ARK's got Tesla's fleet close to 30 million in 2027. If, for example, Tesla was producing 20 million vehicles per year in 2030, that fleet would grow by another 20 million in a single year, and the next year, another 20 million. You can see the numbers get super ridiculous. Probably the most important piece of the entire puzzle to Tesla's future valuation. If they solve autonomy, and I believe they will, and I believe they'll be first with a generalized solution, this will be the money printer of all money printers. Now, there are a lot of parallels between ARK's model and mine. I have a much more simple potato-esque version. It's interesting we've come to similar conclusions about what matters. For example, my FSD take rate on Tesla, the closest approximation here in terms of autonomy adoption, in the base case, peaks close to 80% toward the end of the decade, and in the bull case, peaks at about 99% toward the end of the decade. So, similar timeline, similar adoption curve. We're now looking at the Monte Carlo single simulation table. A bunch of assumptions for one example of a Monte Carlo scenario. Mark has literally 5,000 of these different scenarios, each with a 0.02% probability. If you guys want to nerd it out once again, pause the video and have a look at all of these assumptions. Again, they're not predictions, they're just Here's a probability, this might happen, here's the numbers. Use your own numbers and your own assumptions. Now, I just wanna move over to the actual simulations themselves, all 5,000. You guys can see here, Arc has a ton of different assumptions in here. The maximum gross margin, capex efficiency per vehicle, maximum annual production rate, blah, 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 blah. Robo taxi launch here, which has a huge impact on Tesla's valuation, huge. And we understand why, right? Large fleet, high revenue, pure profit software, essentially makes a huge difference as to when the robotaxis awaken, so to speak. I just want to focus on two things. First of all, Tesla's total revenue. We're going to look at the average of all 5,000 of these simulations and see where we land. In total, ARK's average revenue across all simulations for Tesla in 2027, just over one trillion with a T, trillion dollars. Even in my bull case, I am nowhere near that figure in 2027. Even my hyper bull case, which I've got at a 3% probability, a little under half a trillion. Of course, I am being a little bit more conservative with ARC around assumptions with autonomy, total miles driven and so on. I have a weird conflict because intellectually versus just what feels right, there's a big discrepancy there. I'm probably gonna be wrong to the downside, but I'm not quite there yet. And now onto the market cap, same exercise. I'm gonna look at the average of all these different simulations and see where we end up. If we average all these out, we end up at $6.57 trillion in 2027. For context today, Tesla less than $600 billion market cap, meaning well and truly more than a 10x between now and 2027, which is, uh, let me count here, we're in 23 now, so 24, that's one year, 25, that's two, 26, that's three, and 27, that's four years from now, a 10x or more in four years, something to consider. More importantly, even if ARC are way off the mark, what if it's only three trillion? I don't think too many people would be upset with that kind of return either over four years. Of course, no one knows for sure whether these assumptions will be even close to the mark, but I really like Ark's method of probabilistically weighting scenarios based on how likely they deem them to be rather than just going, okay, how many vehicles will they sell on this date? What will the margin be the end? There's only one right answer. No, no, no. I think it makes a lot more sense to think about probabilities. How high could the gross automotive margins be? How low could they be? What are the probabilities of each of those? What are they likely to be? And then to weight those scenarios accordingly. I don't think you'll find too many others. In fact, maybe no one else on Wall Street, in the investment world, and very few retail investors who use this methodology of probabilistically weighting scenarios, but I really do think it's the way. 
of course, the most important exercise of all is not to copy someone else's homework, but to do your own. I know most people watching are too lazy and or just can't be bothered, haven't taken the time to model these things out, but it's so important. Doing so can give you a very high level of conviction and confidence around certain things and highlight the areas where you're not particularly confident either. If you don't take the time, you can make the mistake of being too dismissive. There's no way the margins could be that high or that low or no way they'd sell that many vehicles. But that's why it's so important to take the time and model this stuff out yourself. And once again, I want to be really clear, these are not predictions from ARK Invest. They're not saying what Tesla stock will be worth or how much the margins will be. They're just different scenarios with different probabilities that produce a probabilistically weighted output. I'm sure most of you know, but just in case you don't, I do have a Tesla valuation model available exclusively on Patreon to supporters at the investor level and above. It's a read-only version for the cheap skates and a fully downloadable version if you can spare the cash. It could be a good starting point for developing your own model or use ARCs, but I really do encourage everyone watching, if you own Tesla stock, you've got to take the time to do this stuff. Otherwise, you may end up the subject of a relentless roasting from some dickhead with three first names on the interwebs who's pointing and laughing and digging up your tweets and videos from 2023 when you panic sold Tesla stock because you hadn't done any fucking numbers, you had no idea what the future looked like, and you're like, oh my god, I'm scared, daddy, please help me! Because believe me, I will be roasting relentlessly, and not to be mean, but to make an example of people and dumb things that they did so you in the future don't repeat those same kind of dumb mistakes, lest you also get roasted relentlessly. This exercise isn't about being right, because no one's going to be right. It's trying to be less wrong, and more important than that, to develop a level of confidence and conviction in your investment thesis. If you haven't taken the time to think about average selling prices, automotive margins, the total adjustable market in different segments based on price point, etc., you're really missing a trick. Let's just leave it at that. It's about time you tried Athletic Greens AG1. I've been taking this stuff for more than two years, feel amazing, massive boost in energy, lots of other perks as well, but the biggest one of course for me. More energy throughout the day, no more afternoon fatigue, I just feel better overall. It's not surprising, giving my body what it needs to feel and perform its best helps me to feel and perform my best. Athletic Greens AG1 is packed full of 75 high quality vitamins, minerals and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and adaptogens and digestive enzymes. And when I say packed full of, I really mean it. Where do we even begin? Vitamin A, C, E, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, folate, vitamin B12, biotin, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, zinc, manganese, copper, sodium. I could keep going on, literally. Of course, if I did that, this video would be about 400 years long. When I say packed full of, I mean packed full of. Now, there are some Einsteins who like to explain in the comments every time I promote our 30 Greens age, going, bro, you're there, you can just get all the stuff you need in a diet, just eat it, you can get everything you need from a balanced diet. These people, unfortunately, are demonstrating what we call the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's true, you get enough to survive from your diet, but if you want to thrive and optimize your health, <laughs> bro, you ain't getting this in a diet unless you're eating about 400 tons of food every day, which isn't a sustainable strategy. Plus, if you head to athleticgreens.com SMR or click the link in the pinned comment, get a one-year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and you'll be well on your way to feeling and performing your best. Try it for a month, see how you feel. If you don't get the results you're looking for, get your money back. That's why there's a money-back guarantee. AG1 boosts energy, supports immunity, helps with recovery. Almost everyone who tries it feels better. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to athleticgreens.com slash SMR. Start your daily health habit now and let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks time. And don't forget, I'm still posting loads of exclusive content available only on Patreon and also posting exclusive content you'll only find on Twitter if you're a subscriber. Click the links in the pinned comment, head over to Twitter and Patreon and I'll see you over there. Love ya.